Hi, welcome to this session on working with PDF and Office documents using VCL and FireMonkey. My name is Girish Patil and I'm the founder of Nostis Information Technologies. And I'm assisted by our senior engineer, Ramnish, who has helped me behind the scenes set up this demo. And today we're going to see the advancements in the Nostis tools for working with PDF and Office documents since the last code rage. And here's the agenda for this session. To maintain continuity and give a summary of the technology to new users or new developers who are seeing this for the first time, we will start with a big picture of the technology and then we will go into detailed demos of using the products on VCL, FireMonkey and the new server-based solution for document processing. And then we will close with general information and Q&A. And just note about this presentation is that there are common parts to it for both the object Pascal and C++ tracks. I've shown both the object Pascal and C++ code at the same time as the code is really simple to understand and where we need to go a bit deeper into code each track will see its own separate example. Nostis has been in the business of providing tools and components for working with electronic documents for about 12 years now. Ever since we created our first products, eDoc Engine and PDF Toolkit, we have felt the need to have a single product to work with documents. And that's how this one product vision got defined. It, it was not just about putting all our products together. It is about providing a single library for working with electronic documents to perform all kinds of operations with electronic documents and to have support for more and more formats as we go along. And also where the developer does not worry about what class to use for a given format or what component to use for a given format. They would just focus on what they need to get done with documents. This is the name of the product, Xtreme Document Studio. And the graphic represents some of the main functions, create, view, print, convert, edit documents of various formats. Now let's see a demo of some of the capabilities of Xtreme Document Studio for VCL. Let's start with an overview of the components. So these are the four components that come with Xtreme Document Studio for VCL currently. The Document Viewer, the Document Printer, Converter, and the DBE Document Viewer. And I have laid them out here to inspect their properties and methods. So the difference between the Document Viewer and the DB Document Viewer is that the DB Document Viewer comes with two additional properties, data source and data field. So we can connect the DB Document Viewer to a database blob field and it will automatically show the document stored in that blob field. Xtreme Document Studio also has standard actions. So you can program the user interface without having to write any code. And let's look at the methods. So if you have to write some code or if you need to write some code, it also provides the methods 
or the APIs to do that. So you have, for example, the load document or load from file and load from stream, and you have the other methods to navigate the document and change the rotation of pages, zoom the pages, and so on. Likewise, for the document printer, there is the print document method, which takes in the document and does the printing. And also, the document converter has a few methods, and it also allows for taking in multiple documents and converting them to a single document. And the events. So here's an example of uh, one of the events, the document converter begin job event. So we took a decision to design all the events in a specific way, and that was to have just two parameters for the event. One was, of course, the standard sender parameter, and the other was of a class type that would get in all the information into the event that we needed to send to it. So for example, here, this event args parameter has a property job info that gives us all the information about the state of the converter at that particular event. So this design allows us to enhance the product without breaking user code. So for example, if we needed to send some new information into this event, we could just add a property and user code would just work as it did before the change. And we have the same thing for C++. So the same set of components and the actions as well and the code as well, the same set of methods and events. Let's switch to the full-fledged viewer demo I have set up and inspect it before we run it. Okay, so this is the viewer demo. It uses the document viewer and uses the document viewer standard actions to set up the viewer's toolbar. And we also have a file browser set up to easily select the files we want to view. And this just a bit of code in this project. And these lines here are to load the file selected in the file browser. Let's run it and see how it works. So first, I will expand all nodes of the tree view. We select docx file, different types of them, with images, with different kinds of columns, and then images, different types, and then PDF files, again, different fonts, some with a few pages and a password protected document and then a PDF with bookmarks and another PDF with some images in it. All of the controls that you would find in a normal viewer are there so to zoom and then to navigate through the pages 
and rotate pages and all of this functionality on all the formats that the viewer supports. So whatever we saw on the PDF also works on the docx file. Okay, let's keep this here and before we open the report file, let's understand a bit about the architecture of the product. This is the architectural overview of the different modules and different layers in the Extreme Document Studio product. So at the base over the Delphi runtime library is the core module which contains the basic framework and all the underlying engines and above that are the document processing engines and above that are the visual controls one set for VCL and another set for FireMonkey and if we need to incorporate support for a new format we would plug it in into the document engines layer and automatically we get viewing printing and converting support for that format and this is how we support a custom format so first we descend our new engine class from the base class for all document engines which is the tgt document class implement a few methods like loading from file loading from stream and then this new engine class has to support the get page count and get page methods and in the get page method we need to return the actual page class which is a descendant of the page class within extreme document studio and in the page class when the document or the framework calls on the documents page to be drawn the draw method of the page class needs to draw the page of the format that it is going to support onto the supplied canvas. And finally, we register the new document engine with the framework using the register document method. And in this case, we've implemented a handler for the fast report report files, and we have registered it into the framework with the file extension that the fast report report file has. So let's switch back a bit to code and see where actually we have done this. So this is the actual fast report report file handler. What I explained is done here. Although we have derived from a class descended from the TGT document class and also the page class and about the draw method. This is where the actual drawing takes place. So we use fast reports capability to draw its report pages onto a canvas and draw the report page onto the supplied canvas and then register the new engine into the framework. So after doing that, this same viewer without any further modifications is able to view fast report report files with all the capabilities that the viewer had for the other formats. To complete this overview of the VCL components, let me quickly show you the document printer and the document converter. So this is the document printer demo. I won't run it but you can see that it has all the capabilities that you would expect from a printer component and it supports printing of all the formats that we just saw with the viewer. Let's move on to the document converter. The document converter is a really powerful component and with just one method call you can convert a list of documents to the chosen format either as one single file or as separate output files based on the choice you make. Let's quickly run this and convert a few documents. 
So I'm going to select a bunch of docx files and say convert them to a single PDF file or merge them. And let's it's converted and you can see the whole list of docx files we selected converted and merged into a single PDF file. And it's all text and not just the whole page saved as an image. I'd just like to point out that everything we saw until now is available for both Object Pascal and C++. Okay, that was all good and that was all VCL. Also, many of you may have seen this before, but what's new? And that's what we will focus on for the rest of the presentation. We now have the long-awaited native FireMonkey document viewer. And currently it supports Windows, Mac, and iOS. The formats it supports are PDF and the image file formats. So let's straight away switch to the IDE and see the document viewer in action. Let me make my FireMonkey document viewer the default application. Let's load the form and let's inspect the project at design time first. So we have a master view that contains the main components for the document viewer application. So there is the document viewer itself and the toolbar for the viewer. And the toolbar buttons are programmed using the document viewer APIs. The FireMonkey document viewer exposes a similar API as the VCL document viewer. You can see that. And then we have derived versions of this form for Windows and OS X. Now let's run this and deploy it to the Mac. While this application compiles and deploys the executable, let me explain a bit about my hardware setup. My main machine is a Mac, and I have a separate physical Windows PC where my Delphi IDE is running. And I'm connecting to this Windows PC over remote desktop from the Mac on my local network. The IDE is set up to deploy to the Mac over the local network. A bit roundabout, but it seems to work better as the Windows OS is sitting directly on a full powered machine. The application is running. Let me open a PDF file. It displays it, there's no problems. Another one. The same ones that we saw with our VCL demos. And let's open some image files. Okay, that works. Now let's see this running on Windows. So the same FireMonkey application, open, and it works on Windows too. So supporting our components for FireMonkey was quite a big project, but I think we made a good start now and we'll keep improving both the VCL and FireMonkey 
and have support for more and more formats in both. And as far as possible, we'll keep the interfaces and functionality similar in both. Okay, let's switch back and see what else we have. Our Delphi team is busy developing native embeddable VCL and FireMonkey components for document processing. We're going to continue to do that. While that has been going on, another team at our company, actually our Java team, has been busy developing a server-based solution for document processing. This server also offers us REST-based API for document processing. And we see that a lot of advantages are there to moving your document processing tasks to a server, especially if you are already running a server-based application and serving a lot of mobile users. Here are some of the advantages. Document processing is usually a heavy lifting operation. So it may be better to move it to a powerful server to ensure consistent performance of your applications for all users. And you don't have to worry about supporting different devices and different formats. You can just support any device today and the formats that the server supports across every device. And since you can interact with the server using standard REST-based APIs, you can just get your work done without any interoperability issues. This new product from Nostis is called Stardox. It provides REST APIs for document processing and storage operations. In simple visual terms, these are the APIs that the server currently supports. Merge, split, convert, secure, and redact text. So this web app is also part of the product. So end users in your organization can actually use it directly. It also comes with an administrative console to set up users who can manage and monitor the system. And you can also provision keys for new applications that will use the REST-based APIs. And also it gives a way to manage and monitor the performance of the system. Lastly, how do we get it set up? It comes as a nicely packaged virtual appliance that you can simply mount onto your virtualization platform. So you start up the appliance, get the IP address or map the IP address to a name so that users don't have to worry about changing IPs and we are ready to get started using the server. It's a complete solution for server-side document processing and I feel our team has really done a neat job of it. And here's a look at the underlying architecture of the product. To start with, all requests to the server come through REST APIs. Even the web application that we just saw uses REST APIs to get its work done. First, all calls land at the public facing load balancer and requests are passed on to the API request server. Requests then go through some validation checks for app key and limits and so on. Then they get picked up by the API provider, which actually performs the document operations. Then as the job is being performed, clients poll for job status. 
Once the client gets a done status code, client makes a download call and gets hold of the document and goes on with whatever they want to do next. And so it goes on. We saw the list of APIs already in the app. And there are just a few more additional APIs to check integrity and get and set document properties. And I promise you, we are getting to the main part of the story and it is going to get really interesting. Okay, so we actually don't have to worry about making REST calls to use Stardocs we actually have a native Delphi component that wraps all the rest processing and gives us a clean set of methods so we can program in the way we are used to as Delphi programmers. And it turns out that the currently available APIs in Stardocs are quite powerful and enough to develop a multi-format multi-device document viewer and also implement parts of a document workflow. And that's what we're going to see. So let's switch to the IDE and first let's have a quick overview of the APIs of the SDK. Let's get some of these out of our way. Here's an app that uses the Stardocs SDK. And this is the general flow of how you would use the SDK. First, you would instantiate the SDK object, then set the connection properties, and then use the document processing APIs to perform the document operations or use the storage APIs to perform upload and download tasks. And you can see that the APIs are categorized under storage and under document operations. So it's also easy to find them and use them. So once the operations are done, you would make a download call to get the final document. So what we'll see now is a mobile viewer, in fact, an Android multi-format document viewer implemented using Stardocs and Xtream Document Studio. So at the beginning, we saw that in Xtreme Document Studio, we could implement new document handlers by descending from the base document handler and, and register that new document handler into the system so that the system could use that document handler for handling those document formats. What we have done is just that. We have written a new handler that uses the REST server, the Stardocs REST server, and we have used it to load the supplied document, get the document converted to images, and then implement the draw method to render the document pages onto the viewer's canvas. So the viewer itself is already cross-platform, that is the FireMonkey viewer. So the engines are not completely cross-platform. But with the Starlox implemented engine, it is possible to process documents across any device. And once we have implemented all the necessary methods, we simply register the new handler for all the formats that we need to support. So this demo uses the Extreme Document Studio document viewer and the new REST-based document handler to achieve document viewing on a mobile device. And we will deploy this app to an Android device. I have a physical device connected to my PC and we will use this screen sharing software to see what's happening on the device. 
and the documents that we're going to see in the viewer are stored as resources in the application. Okay, let's deploy this and see how it goes. It's compiling, linking. Let's bring up our screen sharing software. Should be coming up any moment. It's on my device and it's also on this screen. So here are our options. I will click on the PDF button. I see the document. I can use my fingers to scroll through the document. Then let me click on the button for TIFF. It's already come up on my device and it's also there on the screen. I can scroll through the document. It's much, much smoother on the device itself. And now let me click on the docx button. All the document formats that we could view using the VCL and FireMonkey document viewers for Windows, Mac and iOS now can also be viewed on an Android device. Let's move on to the next demo. The scenario that we need to imagine to understand the next demo is this. A manager in an organization needs to review a set of documents that need to be sent out to a customer and mark which ones in the set of documents can actually be sent out. And if any sensitive information of third parties such as emails and phone numbers need to be removed from the documents. And that's what this demo implements. It uses the FireMonkey document viewer and the REST based document handler. It also uses some APIs of the Stardocs SDK to achieve all this. Once the reviewer decides what documents need to be sent out and if any sensitive information needs to be removed, this code executes. So first, the Stardocs SDK object is created and initialized. Then all selected documents are uploaded to the Stardock server, then they're converted and merged into a single PDF file. And if the reviewer chose to remove sensitive information, such as the phone numbers and emails, the pattern for phone numbers and emails is constructed. And finally, the redact text function is called on the Stardock's SDK to remove the sensitive information. And after all those operations, the final document is downloaded to be shown in the viewer again. And the sample documents that are shown in the application are stored as resources in the application. We will deploy this app to the iOS simulator. Let's run it and use it. So let's view a few of the documents first before selecting them. You can see that the viewer is able to view all kinds of document formats. And you can see that this PDF has a couple of email addresses and a phone number. So we will select this one and we will select this docx file as files to be sent out to the customer. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so I want the phone number and the email IDs to be removed. Next. So the code that we saw is being executed. The document 
So uploaded, merged, and then the email addresses and phone numbers are redacted. And we are seeing the final document in the viewer. With that, we are done with the demos we had for this session. I hope it gave you some good ideas for your applications and how you can use the Nostis document processing technology. Let's switch back to the slides now. So as far as the roadmap for Extreme Document Studio is concerned, right now, this is what is available. So in VCL, we have the view print convert capability for docx, PDF, TIFF, and other image formats. And under FireMonkey, we have viewing capability for PDF and image files on Windows, Mac, and iOS. And coming up next is report export capability in December and more enhancements to the viewer. And going forward, we will be putting in more and more functionality of document processing into both VCL and FireMonkey. And for Stardocs, right now we have the virtual appliance that supports conversion, merging, splitting, redaction, and encryption. And we can use Stardocs in combination with Extreme Document Studio to achieve document viewing on any device at this point. So we will be putting in more and more document processing functions as we move along and also have support for more formats. So, so far only the on-premises edition is available, but we will also be making a cloud hosted version available. So you can just subscribe to the API and pay per use. So all of these components are available as a bundle called Extreme Dev System Delphi. And with this, you get full source. And currently we are offering a 25% discount on this package. And the only difference in licensing is that Stardocs is licensed per server and you don't pay anything for development, but you pay when you deploy. Please check out nostis.com slash codrage for more information on the products, the discount, and also to download the source code for the demos shown here. Thank you. Okay, so um, will there's a couple, few questions that come in here. Will this work as a document viewer for iOS and Android apps? Um, yes, so the native viewer for iOS, yes, and not yet for Android. That's something we are working on. Uh, the Stardocs viewer, which I showed, the REST-based viewer, which requires a server, will work on Android. Okay. How do you recommend controlling duplex and trace selection when printing several documents in one batch? Okay, so that's there in our uh, earlier product, uh, that is PDF Toolkit, but all that is coming into the new product. Uh, it will be there. So currently it's not possible. Um, it's possible, but it's uh, you have to do that using the printer object. Oh, so it's used the printer object. Mm -hmm. That's that's exposed uh, through the um, to the component, uh, so it's possible, but we haven't provided direct way. Does it compress the final result PDF, and can we tweak it? So uh, there is compression happening. I'm not sure which um, example this was referring to, uh, but yes, there is compression, but it's probably not the best um, it's something we are working on optimizing in the sense um, using better compression for images and other optimizations yeah that, there's a lot to that mm -hmm. uh, if i wanted to create an app on the mac using firemonkey what would be the correct choice on the website i.e would extreme dev system delphi subscription 8 be the correct choice 
Um, so extreme dev system dev five gives you all our components. It would definitely be uh, the correct choice, but if you just want um, FireMonkey document viewing, then um, document studio would be enough. Uh, sorry, uh, so you said create an app with uh, create an app for viewing. Yeah. The, uh, create an app on the Mac using FireMonkey. What would be the correct choice on the website? Yeah, so so just um, Extreme Document Studio will do. But getting the whole bundle is is probably a good choice. Uh, it would be nice to have an LT or a light PDF viewer for FireMonkey that could read files or read from files or streams. Um, so we have a view, print, convert edition only, um, or uh, an, an edition just for viewing and printing and converting. And um, that is, I think, um, what uh, will fit into this requirement. Great. So, so it's view, print, convert, and ultimate editions. Uh, can PDFs be saved in PDF slash A format? Okay, uh, that's a big request actually from our German customers. Uh, that's something we are working on right now. We will have it, uh, I think, early 2015, sometime January. 2015. Uh, will it be compatible with C++ Builder anytime soon? Uh, all of this is currently. Uh, so if you download the trial, you will get uh, C++ compatible demos as well. Excellent. Um, how about Excel documents? Okay, uh, so we, we are first supporting the uh, word processing formats. So that's DocX, Doc, and RTF. And then we're getting into the spreadsheet format which includes Excel SX, Excel, and so on. So that's coming. Uh, it's in our roadmap. Uh, we have already started working on it. It'll be next year, but sometime next year. Excellent. For sensitive data, you show phone and email. Can you remove sensitive pages from documents such as financial info pages from a document? Okay, um, so you would have, right now you would have to use two functions so that you have a search function, which will tell you what page uh, that sensitive information that you're looking for is on, and you can then do a delete page for that page. Uh, is signing and verification supported? Verification, no. Uh, signing, yes. A single signature you can do um, with our PDF toolkit product. Are there any plans for a document composer or editor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes, I think we want to uh, cover everything to do with documents. So that is also in our plan. Uh, we are doing some prototyping with that now on our .NET platform, but that will come over to VCL and FireMonkey at some point. Thanks for uh, another great session, Grish. This is a lot of good information on dealing with documents, PDFs, Office documents with both VCL and FireMonkey. Thank you, Jim. It's exciting to see the mobile support coming along. Uh huh. Yeah, we are excited too. We can't wait to have more of it. Uh, does your viewer have the ability to touch or click contained words? for event processing, i.e. click a contained drawing number and look up a entry. So you do have mouse events that tell you where the click was with reference to the page, um, but not specifically, it doesn't say what word it was clicked on, but yes, that's something uh, we're gonna address or we're gonna have, uh, that is uh, full interactivity with the viewer. So the next thing we'll be doing is, or working on, is um, form filling and uh, annotation support for the viewer. So we are m moving into that, in, in that direction.